the footer. So what we're going to do now is create a header, which looks like this, where we have the logo here on the left side. And then we have the navigation links here on the top right, which will take us to all of the other pages we have created. And then the footer, we're going to also add the logo once again, and then our legal pages, the privacy policy terms of service or any other uh, policies you want to add here. So let's go ahead and create our website header. And the first thing we got to do is create our main menu that you can see here. So let's head over to our WordPress dashboard and then go to appearance and click on menus. And then we want to create the menu by giving it the name here. So I'm going to name it main menu, click on create menu. And then we need to add pages to our main menu. So under pages, let's click on view all. And then what we want to add is our blog page, our about page and our contact page. So let's click on add menu here. And now we can see we have these pages in the main navigation menu. We can also move them around by just dragging them up or down. So the ones that are at the top here are the ones that will come up first. Now uh, under main menu settings, we want to choose the display location. So where this menu will be displayed. And I'm going to choose main, which will then uh, mean that it will be shown in the website header. So let's click on save menu. And then let's look at our website again by going here and then right click open in a new tab. And now we should be able to see we have this new menu as you can see here. And now to customize this menu to make this look exactly like what we see here, we're going to have to go and click on customize. Then here, the first thing I want to do is disable this top bar, which is the bar above the header. So let's click on top bar and then go to general and then just untick the enable top bar option. And now you can see the top bar is gone. Let's click on publish. And now the next thing I want to do is disable this border that you can see here just below the header. So let's go back to the main menu. Then let's go to header general. And then for the header border bottom, we're just going to click on disable. And that way the border is gone. Let's click on publish. Then let's go back one step and click on menu. And then here what we can do is add an effect that will be shown whenever we hover over the links here. So what I want to do is just add this underline effect that you can see here when we hover over this navigation menu. And you can do that by going to link effects. And then it's this first one underline from left. And then when we hover over the links, you can see you have this underline effect, we just need to change the color as well. So under links effect color, we're going to change this from the blue to the accent color that we have for our website. So I'm going to take this color here and then paste the color code in this field and then just click out of the window. And now when we hover over here, you can see we have this green underline. Then let's scroll down. And for the link color, this is just the color of the text here. So I'm going to change this to also one of my default colors, which is this one here for the text. So copy this code, paste that in here. And now the color has changed. And then I also want to disable the search function here. So I'm going to scroll down and look for search icon. And then I'm going to change it to disabled. And now it is gone. Let's click on publish. And now the last thing I want to do is change the font size of this menu. So let's scroll all the way up, go back two steps, then go to typography, go to main menu right here. And then we can change the font size here. So currently it's 13 pixels. I'm going to change this to 17 pixels to just make the menu here a bit larger, then click on publish. Next, we're going to add our logo to the header. So let's go back and then back again, and then go to header and click on logo. And then we can click on select logo here and we can drag in our logo. So I've prepared one for this website, which looks like this. So let's click on select. And then obviously we want to have it. Uh, we want to see the entire logo click on crop image. And there we go. This is far too too large. So for the maximum width, we're gonna set this to be a bit smaller, probably something like this looks fine. So now I want to quickly show you also how I created this logo because it's actually really easy. I've used a tool called Canva, you can find the link down below in the description. So once you have an account with Canva, just click on create design. Then for this logo, uh, I've used a custom size here, then I've used 1400 times 200 pixels. You can also use other dimensions depending on what your logo should look like, then create new design. 
And then um, I took the text tool, add a heading, and then type in the name. So Maddox Reviews, then make this all caps, make this larger, kind of like this. And then I also just added an element here. So I'm going to elements on the left side, type in marketing, uh, because this should be about marketing. Then under graphics, see all. And then I have a lot of different uh, gr marketing graphics that I could use for my logo. So I wanna have something simple, maybe something like this would work. So I have a premium account with Canva. That's why I have access to probably more elements than you with a free account but obviously you can also upgrade if you want to. Um, so then you can also change the color. So for example, reviews, I would change to one of the uh, website colors, which could be this one here. Then we're gonna go to colors and then add this color code. And then for the logo, we can also change the color. So I would change this green to my accent green color. And then the yellow, I would change to uh, that was wrong. The yellow I want to change to black or do it the other way around or have this one green and this one um, black. So whatever you want. But this way you can really easily create a quick logo using Canva. Now what you want to do is you want to have a logo for a, a light background like a white and then also one for a dark background. So what I like to do is just click on the duplicate icon here and then everything that's black I'm going to change it to white. So just highlight the black part and then change the color to white. Here the same, change the black to a white color. Then click on the background and then change the background to a black. And now you have a logo for a, high, a light background and a dark background. Now to download these logos, we're just gonna click on share and then click on download. And then we're gonna activate the transparent background. Then click download and then we have the files on our computer. Now again, if you don't have a premium account with Canva, you can use a site called um, remove.bg uh, remove and this way you can remove the background uh, for free and you don't need to pay for Canva. And then here, as you can see, we can also add a Retina display logo. This should be twice the normal logo size. So you can also do that in Canva. Just um, right click on your design, click on make a copy, and then open up the design again, and then go to resize, and then just double the values. So hit this lock icon, change the height from 200 to 400, click on resize, and then you have twice the size, and you can download it again, and then upload it uh, here for the Retina logo. I've already prepared it, so I'm just gonna upload it here from my computer, choose image, there we go. So now we're already done with our header. So let's click on publish. But there's one more thing I want to show you, which is if you want to add categories here to your header navigation bar, which is something you see a lot with affiliate marketing websites and blogs. And um, you can also do that as well by going to your WordPress dashboard. And then under appearance and menus, you can also add categories. So here add menu items, you want to click on categories. And then I have one category so far, so far for this website and we can just click on it, click add to menu, then save menu on the bottom right. And now when we go to our website, visit site, we can see we have now a category link as well. So you can add as many categories as you want or you can add also other pages and then add them to the menu as well. Next, we're going to create the website footer which is gonna be visible at the bottom of the website. And this is what it's gonna look like. We have a logo, then we have this um, separator, then our policy pages, and then we have a copyright notice all the way at the bottom. So let's go to our page, and then we're gonna click on customize here on the top. Then the first thing we're gonna do is change the text here at the footer bottom. So let's click on footer bottom, and then to change the text, we can just change it right here. So I will just copy what I have here on my example website. Just copy this text then paste that in here. Now you can also get rid of the footer bottom. If you don't want it, you can just uh, untick this option here and then the footer bottom will be disabled. Then I also wanna change the background color of the footer bottom. So I'm gonna use uh, this color here. So I'm gonna copy it and then let's go back to the customizer, click on the background color and then paste in the color code right here. There we go. And then let's save the changes by clicking publish. And now let's take care of the footer, which is the section above. 
So let's go back and then click on footer widgets. And then the first thing we want to do is determine how many columns we want to have in that footer. And here for this example, we only have one column. So that's kind of the simplest version you can do. So we're going to change from four columns to just one column like this. Then I'm going to scroll down and for the text color, I'm going to change this to just a total white. And for the links hover color, I'm going to change this to my accent green, which is this one. So let's go back, paste that color code in here and then save the changes, click publish. Actually, I forgot to change the background color as well. So we want to have the same color like we have on the footer bottom, which is this color here. So let's copy it, then go to background color, copy or paste in the color code. And there we go. Now we can click publish again. And now we're ready to add content to the footer. So to do that, we're going to go back and then we're going to go to widgets footer one. And then here we can click on this plus icon to add different elements to our footer. So the first thing I want to add is my logo for that I have made for a dark background. So I'm going to choose image. And then you can either click on upload or you can also just drag and drop your um, logo to the window here. And that will also upload it. And then we can see it's much too big. So we're just going to uh, to click and drag this to the left side to make this logo smaller. So this is a bit too small. So let's just experiment how it looks the best. So maybe a bit more. I think this looks fine. And now before I add the policy links, I want to add a separator. So I'm going to click on the plus icon again, type in separator. And there we go. We can just use this one here. And there's nothing more we need to do. So let's click on the plus icon again. And now I'm just going to add some text. So I'm going to click on paragraph and then I'm gonna, just going to type in the policies that I want to add. So I'm going to add a privacy policy and then I'm going to add this line and then I'm also going to add a terms of service page link. And then to center the text, we're going to click here and then align text center. And now it should be right here. And that's pretty much it for our footer. Now there's one more thing we need to do, which is um, make this text a link, which then goes to the privacy policy page. So we would have to click here and then add the link, but we don't have made our privacy policy and, and our terms of service page yet. So first we need to create those pages and then we can link them to the footer 